Having to maintain a website with multiple breakpoints where font sizes are changing between them all over a whole bunch of different elements can be a little bit of a nightmare. But luckily, thanks to modern CSS, there's a few different approaches that we can take to making life a lot easier on that front. If that sounds like something that could help you out, then stick around. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy that you're here to join me today. And if you are new to my channel, my name is Kevin. And here at my channel, I help you just fall in love with the wonderful world that is CSS. And if not, fall in love with it at least be a little bit less frustrated with it. Today, we're gonna to be looking at some modern CSS techniques that you can use to maintain the responsive typography on your site. And I'm also gonna look at a mistake that people often make and why it's so important that you avoid it. If that sounds good to you, then let's dive right in. All right, so I've created this simple site right here and you can see that uh, when I pass a certain breakpoint, my font sizes are switching. H1 shrinking, the body size is shrinking, everything is adjusting and this is a really common thing to happen because as we have more screen real estate we have people further away from the screen we want to increase the font size and to do that we often have media queries everywhere that are doing it so i have my body that i'm changing then i have h1 that i'm changing and my block quote that i'm changing and so on and so forth and of course i have them here spread out everywhere but you might also just have one media query that's just has everything that's changing in it in one spot and that's awesome too uh, but one of the reasons this is a little bit annoying is because usually you'll have a design system that you're following. And for me, my block quote, uh, which is this guy down here, as well as my lead, which is this guy right here, are sharing the same font size. So you have the 1.5 that's getting changed to a two here, and then you have another one over here that's a 1.5 that's getting changed to a two. And you might have three, four, five different elements or components that are sharing something like this, and you have to remember to include them all. And then if you know you create your media query and you forget one of them, and then you know you have to go and make that change after because the you know my lead's not changing when it's supposed to, uh, even though the other one is, or then the design team comes back and they say actually you know what these should all be three instead of a two so you're like oh okay not so bad you find your block quote you change your block quote to a three they're happy with that they go yeah that's great but you forgot the lead and you go i have to go back and change the lead and that sucks you don't want to maintain all of this stuff so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to delete all my media queries all right so all my media queries that had to do with type are are gone so now you can see i still have my two column layout coming in but everything else the, the text is all staying the same and what I like to do is I like having my font sizes here. So I'm going to do a font size of Excel and we're going to see why it's Excel in a minute. A font size of, we're going to have a 600, a font size 500, and a font size 400. And if you're wondering about the name, the numbering convention I used here, and you can see I'm using numbers over here too, I base it on the same idea as font weights. So the 400 here would be like your base one. This is your normal, I use it for my body, and then I just go up from there or down from there just because I wanna keep the same numbering convention that font weights use and I find it easier. So here I'm gonna say this is one rem. This one's going to be a 1.25 rem. This one will be a 1.5 rem. And for now, I'm gonna do this one as a five rem, but we're gonna play with the Excel a little bit more in a second. So I'm gonna set that up. So on my body here, instead of, I have my font size. So instead of one rem, I can say that it's var font size of 400. And let's just copy that actually. And then we can come into my block quote. My block quote, the font size should actually be my var font size 600. As should my lead is also the var font size 600. And I thought I needed a 500, but we'll stick with that. And we can see now uh, that we've set that all up. It's working. It's just like it was before. But the nice thing with this is you can do one media query right here for maintaining. So we can do our min width of 40m just like I had before. And then in here, I can redefine different things that are in my custom properties. And this is something you can't do with a preprocessor variable. So this is one of the really nice things with custom properties. And what I can say here is this becomes a 7. This is, I'm going to do a two point, oh, we'll go with two, it's big enough difference. This one we're not actually using, so let's delete that because we don't need it. And then this one can be a 1.125. And so now when I pass that line right here, you can see that everything is adapting. Now this is a really simple example, so we don't have a lot of repetition, but the nice thing with it again is I could change this to a three and change this to a two because my design has updated or the design team came back to me with something else. And because this is being used in those two different spots, my lead and my block quote, they are both adjusting when I hit that breakpoint. And I think this block quote might've been behind my face a little bit there. So I apologize for that, but uh, we can see that it is adjusting automatically. At least you can see the lead switching there and you can play with this code pen if you want 
uh, as well to see them both changing when we hit that breakpoint. Um, of course, my H1, I didn't switch that one. So the H1 should be my var font size XL. Um, and that's the next one we're going to explore. So now we should see that shrinking and growing as well. And this is the next one I want to explore. And this is where we're actually going to look at a bit of a mistake that people make first and then the better solution to it. So what I'm going to do is take off this Excel from here. And again, one thing before I jump into it, the thing I really like about this is you're maintaining your entire type system all right here at the top of your file, which is just so wonderful. You don't have to go hunting for anything. You don't have to find anything. It's so great. Um, but then what we can do here is, and this is something I see a lot of people do is say like 10 viewport width. And then what happens is the font size is linked in to the viewport width and you get this fluid type. And actually because it's big, let's make that like 15. Um, and then you get this nice big font. It's adjusting. It's completely fluid. People love that, the fluidness of it and everything. Uh, but there are concerns with it. First of all, at small screen sizes, it can get really small. Or if you're on like an ultra wide monitor, it's just going to be extremely big and actually potentially hiding other things, causing some other issues. So uh, there's that problem with it. Plus, what people do is once they discover that, they start going, oh, I can do that. Well, why do I need, why not just use that everywhere? And then they come in and say, this is like five viewport width. And you hit save, and then you get like this, or maybe five is a bit big, let's try two. <laughs> and then you get like this fluid design system, and it's working everywhere, and it's wonderful. But I mean, look how small that's getting at smaller screens. Your phone, it's going to disappear. Large screens, again, it can get really big. And the other issue with this is you can't zoom in or out on it. No, I'm in CodePen, so it's a little funky if I zoom in and out here, but I'm gonna go to the live view in another tab. And you'll see, I'm gonna zoom in and out, and you can see that the text that wasn't set in viewport units is actually adjusting. My margins are actually changing a little bit on stuff, but the text that was set with viewport units is not changing. And imagine if this is too big, people are like, oh, that's too big, and they wanna zoom out, and the text doesn't change. Or they're on a smaller screen, they're trying to zoom in because the text is tiny, it doesn't change. So using viewport units for typography is very much um, not a good thing as far as accessibility goes, but there are solutions to that. Um, the first thing I would suggest is not doing it for smaller text, unless you have a nice system, because there are ways that you can actually make fluid systems like this. But just with the ease of setting up the changes like this within a single media query, I don't mind this at all. I find it really easy to maintain. And then where you do want it, I tend to do this on my, my big text, that's why I did an Excel here, is use the clamp. And what clamp does is it lets you set a minimum. So we're gonna go with like a 3.5 rem, a growth rate. So I'm gonna do like 12 viewport width plus one rem, and we'll look at that in a second too. And then over here, I'm gonna do my like eight RAM or something pretty big. And so it means this is the size it wants to be. And you can do math inside the clamp. So it's 12 viewport width plus one RAM. And what that allows it to do is that's, you're gonna see, and actually we can make this bigger, I guess, 12. Uh, so what that means is it can shrink and can grow. We're taking advantage of that growth factor that we were looking at with the viewport units, but it means it will never shrink smaller than 3.5 RAM. So at small screen sizes, you don't risk it getting tiny, 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 and you will hit a maximum at one point and it will stop growing at that 12 rem that you have here. And I love this so very much. I think that's a really nice way to handle really big text where you want it to take up lots of screen real estate at large screen sizes, but less at small screen sizes. It's just so wonderful. And again, having everything set up right here for your entire typography system within custom properties just makes so much sense these days. And having the rem in here, it does allow that if somebody is zooming in and out, that it can still actually affect the font size as well. So it will zoom a little bit because that one rem as people zoom in and out is being affected. So that is responsive type. And if responsiveness in general and responsive layouts and all of that is something that you struggle with, I put a custom playlist right here for you in some of my own videos that dive into making responsive layouts and dealing with responsiveness in general. And with that, a really big thank you to Zach, Randy, and Stuart, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.